Hello everyone and welcome back to another library book haul. So this is like my big fall haul. Now that we're in October I feel like we're properly getting into the fall season and I am ready to get a bunch of books. So I had done a little library trip last week when I was coming back from vacation and I finished two of the books that I got out then. I have two more left to go. Um, one of them is the Once Upon a Spine Cozy Mystery. I've actually already started this so I just haven't finished it and I have to finish it to review it. Um, and the other one is The Monster Bones. This one I haven't started because I was listening to some nonfiction audiobooks and now that I've finished those I'm ready to start a nonfiction. So I'll probably start this today and I'll keep reading this. I expect these to be done shortly. So these are still left over from my last haul. I haven't finished them. I also haven't forgotten about them. So yeah, that's where we stand on these. However, I got a huge selection of books sitting right here and I am ready to do some fall reading. Fall is a wonderful season to read. I love waking up, having a cup of coffee, seeing the sunrise come up, and just paging through a book in the morning, or sitting, I like it when it rains in the fall. I like hearing the rain come down and sitting in bed at night and just reading a book. It's wonderful, it's some of the best things in life. So I'm ready to get some books to read, and I did that today. So the first one I got was called Forest Walking, Discovering the Trees and Woodlands of North America by Peter Wollaven Wol 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 and Jane Billinghurst. Uh, so I got this because it just seems to be a book about, yeah, what you see when you go walking in a forest. I love taking hikes in the woods. It's one of my favorite activities. It's a great way to stay fit and also just to go around and see nature. I read a book way back in like 2019 about a woman about a woman who moved and then decided to learn like a new piece of nature every day like identifying a plant or a tree or learning something about birds and I thought that was really interesting. This isn't quite the same vein but it's still that getting out in the natural world so I'm excited to read it. It's not that long but I'm sure I'm gonna have a great time reading this book. So that is Forest Walking by Peter, um, I'm gonna go with Volleben and Jane Billing. Billinghurst, not Billingshurst. The next book I got is again falling in the ancient Mesopotamia area of history that I love reading about and that is Inanna, I hope I'm saying that word right, Queen of Heaven and Earth, Her Stories and Hymns from Sumer by, this is by Diane Volkstein and Samuel Noah Kramer. So I actually read another book by Samuel Noah Kramer that was the Sumerians book that I read that I really enjoyed and I reviewed on this channel. So if you like this, um, I might recommend reading this. I'll see. I have to read it. I see a lot of it is just like some of the translations from the stuff, but then there's also areas near the end which kind of provide a little bit more content to it. So I'm hoping to get a nice blend of both the actual uh, texts where they derive the information and the author's analysis of the information that they have to kind of, yeah, draw a complete picture of this goddess who's worshipped in Sumer. Again, this book is a little dated like some of the other Samuel Noah Kramer stuff. I don't think it's something you can prevent if you are writing in an academic sense. There will become a point where your work becomes a little bit more outdated, but I don't think it necessarily means it's bad. I'm gonna go take go ahead and take a look at when this was copyrighted. Copyright 1983, so a little older, but I still find his work very, very interesting, so I'm going to read this one. Next up is a book that I'm probably not gonna review, but I just got out because I've actually already read it before and I thought I had a lot of helpful information. That is Fluent Forever by Gabriel Weiner. Um, this was a really interesting book on language learning that I've taken a lot of tips from. I like learning languages as a hobby, so I found this book very, very helpful to rapidly increase my uh, language learning ability or like how comfortable I feel in a language. This book was very, very helpful. I've recommended it to some other people I know who read it and they found it very, very helpful as well. I'm just going to give it a reread. Um, I tend to... Uh, I think I tend to like maintain my languages in the summer but then like gain in the winter so I do a lot of focus study in the winter when it's cold where I live and then in the summer I'm just kind of like immersing myself in it and not really making efforted study attempts. So now that we're going back into winter I'll probably make some more efforted study attempts at the languages I enjoy learning and I wanted to give this a reread. So I got this out, probably won't review it um, but I do highly highly recommend this book if you're interested in language learning or just becoming fluent in a foreign language or um yeah, want to learn some tips. It's also about just like memory. So if you have anything that you need to memorize or would like to memorize, this would probably be a very, very good book to read. The next book. Um, so a while ago, I checked out the book The Witch's Tree by M.C. Beaton, which is an Agatha Raisin mystery. I thought it was a cozy mystery. I don't think they're supposed to be cozy. Maybe they are. I did not like that book at all. I wrote a review, which was, or I filmed a review, which is very polarizing. And uh, some people also did not like the book, but some people did and thought it was really, really great. 
Uh, Agatha Raisin has made her way back into my life. I discovered there was a TV show and I'm not big on TV, but I decided to put it on one night when I was working on a work project and I was like, this is a terrible TV show. And then I just kept watching it because I guess that's how my brain works. And yeah, it kind of became like a guilty indulgence. So I watched a lot more than I should have and I decided to read another book despite not particularly liking the first book. Um, and despite the TV show not being like top quality TV, not that I would know what top quality TV is, because I don't watch TV. Um, so don't ask me what top quality TV is. So I got another one. This is Pushing Up Daisies by M.C. Beaton. This is another Agatha Raisin. Um, cozy mystery? Mystery? Some sort of mystery. I'm looking forward to reading this. I'll see how I feel about this one. It may have been that the first book just rubbed me the wrong way. We'll see if I like this one anymore or if I have more polarizing opinions about this. Next up is um, Language in Danger, The Loss of Linguistic Diversity and the Threat to Our Future. This is by Andrew Dalby. Um, so yeah, I pulled it out and it just looks like exactly what it says, a uh, book on the loss of language diversity and kind of what it means. I'm interested in reading this. Um, it looks like it may tend to be a little more academic, but I am interested in seeing what the book has to say. It also looks a little dated. I believe this was copyright 2003. Yep, 2003. I did look it up when I was in the library because it just seemed a little dated, but I'm sure it still have a lot of good information that I can apply. And if I'm interested in reading more about the topic, I can find other books to read in the same vein of information. So this is Language in Danger, The Loss of Linguistic Diversity and the Threat to Our Future by Andrew Dalby. Next up is probably something that's actually controversial, controversial, um, and that is Algebra the Beautiful, um, an ode to math's least loved subject. So. I, I, when I was in school, when I was in college, I did my degree in mathematics and I hated math up into algebra two. So my school system split it into algebra one and algebra two. Algebra one, I took in ninth grade and I hated it. I despise math like I had for the previous uh, nine years that I've been in school. I thought math was horrible. Why would I even love it? But then I took algebra two. Algebra two was the teacher that just clicked with me for some reason. The way he taught was very understandable. And I realized I actually really, really enjoyed math. I just didn't have the right teacher up until that point to kind of show me how much I loved math. So I fell in love and algebra two really, uh, yeah, set off my love affair with mathematics. And it kind of spurred me to eventually go on and get a degree in math. So this is a little bit of a longer book, but it doesn't seem very intense. The text is kind of big. But um, I'm interested in seeing what he says. I know a lot of people out there do not like math. I know that algebra is kind of held up as like the subject that no one really likes. So I'm interested in reading this and seeing what he has to say. Uh, this is by G. Arnell Williams, um, Algebra the Beautiful. So we'll see what he has to say. I think algebra is beautiful, but we'll see what everyone else thinks. Probably people will not like math, but I do. The next one, I really did get quite a lot of books. Um, is, well, this is the last one. Never mind. This is the last one. Uh, the Origins of the Anglo Saxons Decoding the Ancestry of the English by uh, Jean Marco. Jean Marco? Her name was Jean. Jean Marco. So I really like reading about history, and this just seemed interesting to me. Um, just seems kind of like a pop culture. I don't know, not pop culture, pop science. Uh, it seems very accessible is what I'm trying to say. I don't think this leans too academic. Things seem to be chopped up in very neat little boxes um, with plenty of pictures and diagrams, which are really helpful. I find some of the more academic oriented books um, just have very technical diagrams or uh, you sometimes they really rely on the person reading it to have a lot of background information in the topic so i have absolutely no problems with starting out with something that's really more aimed for the general reader because it kind of gives you that foundation um, i think the more academically geared books can have a lot of really good detailed information but they're really expecting you to have built that foundation either on your own or through academic study so things like this i think are great for building a foundation we'll see how i enjoy it again that's the origins of the anglo-saxons i feel like the content of this book is rather self-explanatory uh, by we're going with Jean Monko. I don't actually know how to say her first name, unfortunately, or how she says her first name. Uh, and this is Decoding the Ancestry of the English. So yeah, I'm interested in reading about this, interested in history as always. And I'm going to add this Fluent Forever book in my huge stack. As you can see, we're moving into a colder season and I plan or I anticipate reading more because I have quite the selection of books. I hope you enjoyed uh, this little review of what I purchased. If any of these seem interesting to you, please let me know. Other than that, stay tuned for the review of all of this because I will be reviewing these. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day.